for mathematical analysis of non recursive algorithms we have to follow uh, the following steps so the first one is we have to identify the size of uh, input and the second one what are the basic operations we are performing on uh, the uh, algorithm we have to identify if it is uh, in the inner loop uh, we have to identify how many times that basic operation is going to be performed and the third one is uh, check uh, whether the number of times a basic operation is executed is depending on only on the input size or any extra parameters uh, it depends so if any additional properties it depends uh, then we have to calculate the worst case average case and the best case efficiencies uh, separately right if it is depending on only the input size then you are going to calculate the worst case efficiency only that is of enough and then we have to set up uh, uh, a summing uh, expression uh, that uh, the number of times that algorithm basic operation is executed depends on that we have to set up a summing expression and by using the standard formulas and rules uh, we have to uh, perform the manipulation on summing expression uh, and then uh, we have to establish the order of the growth so these are the steps we have to follow uh, for mathematically analysis of a non recursive algorithms so let's uh, try to understand these steps using a simple examples so uh, in this lecture i'm going to explain you with two different examples uh, how you're going to calculate the uh, efficiency uh, for the algorithms right uh, so these are the non recursive algorithms so simply the first algorithm is we are going to find out the maximum element from a given array list so now your array is consisting n number of elements so the array index starts from 0 to uh, and ends with n minus 1 so the algorithm name is max element which takes an input as an array of size n so now uh, the input is uh, array of size n and the output we expected the largest element from a given array so here it is an algorithm. So first of all, we don't know which one is the largest element in your array. We have to assume that whatever the first element in your array and that will be the maximum value. And the logic is we have to compare with that value with all the remaining elements in your array. So if you are finding any number which is largest to your assumption, then you have to exchange those numbers. Uh, and then uh, let's start comparison with the remaining numbers. Uh, in that way, you're going to find out the maximum value from your list. So that is the logic behind this. So here we are using for loop and this I, uh, for loop is going to run uh, from 1 to n minus 1 because the 0th index will taken as a maximum element as our assumption. So we need not to compare the same element with that. So what simply we have to do, the rest of the elements from your array is going to compare with the max value. So now you are comparing if A of i is nothing but A of 1, A of 2, A of 3 elements and so on A of n minus 1 elements is greater than your max value. Means it's greater than your assumption. That's simply what we have to do. We have to assign that index value to your max value. At last you are going to return your max value. That is a simple uh, algorithm so here is an example suppose i'm taking a list which consisting of seven elements now here it is listed so 63 15 18 23 11 89 and 76 so my array size is seven and the starting index is zero and the ending index is six and uh, from my assumption i took the first element as a max element so max value is 63 so what your algorithm will say, you start comparison from the first element. So now the 63 is compared with 57, uh, 15. So my assumption is right. So I need not to swap. <coughs> I need not to assign my max value. So now for the next iteration, the F2 value is 18 and 18 is not greater than to 63. So my max value is remain 63 only. And now, I get increment, I'll take my third index position value that is 23. So 24, uh, 23 is not greater than 63. So in, in this case also, my max value is not changed. So it's remains 63 only. So I get increment, now I'm getting the fourth position. So that value is 11, 
right? So now 11 is not greater than to 63. So again, the condition failed. So my max value is remain 63 only. And after that, again, I get increment. Now it will take A of fifth position value. So that is 89. So 89 is greater than 63. So my condition is true. So what your algorithm will say, you just uh, remind your algorithm. So if A of I position value is greater than your assumption, then what simply we have to do? So we have to assign that index value to your max value. Okay, so now see 89 and 63 is compared. 89 is greater than to 63. So now max value is going to assign with 89. Okay, and then we have another values also so that your I get increment. Again, it will take the last element that is 76. Again, it compared with 89. So we know that 76 is not greater than to 89. So max value is remain same that is 89. Okay, so we know like uh, in previous iteration only the max value is changed uh, with 89. Before that, it will be 63. So now uh, I get increments again. So there are value is 7. So 7 is your input size, right? So which is greater than to your for loop. The for loop, the upper limit. So what happening? The loop get exit. So now your max val variable will consist in the value as 89. Now your algorithm is going to return value as 89. So how you're going to... Uh, Analysis mathematically, this non-recursive algorithm. So what the first step will say, we have to identify the size. What is the size of this uh, problem is N. Okay. And what is the second thing? We have to identify the basic operations. So what is the basic operation here? The basic operation means every time in every iteration, what we are doing, that will be the basic operation. So here we are finding two operations. One is the comparison and the second one is assigning value. But we can see every time we cannot do the, uh, I mean, assigning value with max, means the max value is not changed every time. Only the comparison operation is going on every time. So we consider only the comparison as a basic operation. So we have only one basic operation in this algorithm. Okay, so now what is the third step we'll say? We have to establish one summing expression, right? We have to establish one summing expression. So now see C of N equals to the cost of this algorithm is equals to sigma of. So this is I. So, you know, in your algorithm, you are going to run your loop, right? So this is a basic operation we are performing inside of your loop. And this loop is going to run from one to N minus one. Okay, so from 1 to n minus 1. So you have to assign that here. So i is from 1 to n minus 1 and my basic operations are 1. So this is a setup of a summing expression. So and later what we have to do, we have to use the formulas and we have to uh, mean uh, establish or we have to... Uh, And what we have to do, we have to manipulate the summing expression, right? Either using the formulas, okay? And then we have to establish the order of growth. So how it is going to increase, we have to do that. So for that, we have to use a formula like upper bound minus lower bound plus one, okay? So what is the upper bound here? N minus one. What is the lower bound here? One. And uh, plus one, we have to do. So N minus one, minus one plus one. So minus one plus one will get cancelled and we are getting n minus one. So we have to uh, eliminate the constant value and we have to take the uh, exponential of n that will be the growth. So then that is nothing but it will be a theta of n. So this is a time complexity how you are going to find for non-recursive algorithm and we'll go with another example. So here what we are going to do is we have to check whether all elements in a given array of n Elements are distinct. So what you're going to check is all elements are unique. Okay, there is no duplicate. Okay, so that uh, we are going to check here. So determine all elements in a given array are distinct. And uh, the input will be uh, A of N. That is, uh, we are taking element from 0 to N minus 1 index. And the output, it returns true. If all elements in A are distinct, otherwise it returns 
false. So how you're going to check? Like you're going to compare that. Okay, you are going to compare adjacent elements and we are finding that no two elements are same. Okay, then your list will consist in uh, distinct values. If any of two elements are same, then the list is not distinction. Okay, so that is a logic here. So we are going to run i from 0 to n minus 2. That is the last but one. Okay, index. And your j is going to run from i plus 1 to means the adjacent element. If your i is 0, then j starts from 1. If i is 1, then j starts to 2. Like that, it is going to check. And it is going to run n minus 1 up to. So what you are going to do, we have to check a of i and a of j both are same. If it is same, then simply we return false. If it is not same, till the end of uh, your algorithm, then it is going to return true. So now uh, we can take any of example. Suppose uh, we'll consider one example. So I'm taking uh, my n is four. For simplicity, I'm going to take a, a simple example. Okay, and then my elements are suppose I'm consider my first element as ten, and my second element as. 12. Okay. And then my third element as again 10. Okay. And my fourth element as 9. Right. So when this algorithm is going to return false, if you find duplicate number, right, the same number is repeated more than one time, then your algorithm is going to return value as false. Otherwise, it returns true. So go with this. So now your indexes, you can see this is zero index and this is one index and this is index two and this is index three. Okay, this is index three. So now you're going, uh, your i is going to run from zero to two only because this is n minus two. Okay, and then your j is going to run from one to three. Okay, from one to three. So then initially your i value is zero so that your j value is one. So these two elements are compared. 10 is equals to 12. No, the condition failed, right? The condition failed because 10 and 12 is not equal. So now what's happening? You are inside of your j, right? If it is j is get, uh, mean exit, then only we are going to see the outside loop, right? Otherwise we are up to inside of your j loop only. So now your j get increment. Now we get a value as 10. Right? We get the value as 10. So now you are going to compare 10 with 10. So now 10 is equals to 10. The condition is true. Okay. When this condition is true, what you are going to do? So we have to return Right? What it is going to return? If this condition is true, then uh, we are going to return as false, right? Because this list is not distinct because we have a duplicate value. Okay. So in this way, this algorithm is going to work. And now we see how we are going to analyze, analyze this algorithm. So uh, the natural measures of the input size here is again n only. And the innermost loop. So innermost loop is nothing but your j is having a single operation that is a comparison. Okay. So now, now the basic operation is only one. And a number of elements comparisons is depends not only on n, but also on whether there are equal elements in the array and if there are which array positions they occupy. So we'll limit of our investigation to the worst case only. So here we are going to find only the worst case situation. So here we are finding i and j, both loops are running. So you can see, you can establish a summing formula here. So sigma i from 0 to n minus 2 and uh, j from i plus 1 to n minus 1. And the basic operations are 1. So first of all, we have to uh, eliminate this summation. So simply how you are going to do? So we can make uh, upper bound minus lower bound plus 1. So what is your upper bound n minus 1? Minus of what is your lower bound i plus 1 plus 1. 
So this is a formula, right? In previous slide only, I'll show that. So uh, now we have to simplify this. This is n minus 1 minus i minus 1 plus 1. So this minus 1 plus 1 will get cancelled. Now you're getting n minus 1 minus i, right? And then uh, you have to, uh, I mean, uh, for simplifying this expression, we have to split this. So one expression is from i, sigma i 0 to n minus 2 to n minus 1 is one expression. And minus of sigma i 0 to n minus 2, i is another expression. Like, that we, like this, uh, we have to split it. And after that, here we have a formula like i from 0 to n. Then i you are going to take in, it will be n into n plus 1 by 2 is a formula. So in place of n, you can substitute n minus 2. So now you get n minus 2. Okay. And then what is the formula you have? The summing of uh, n, that is n into n plus 1 by 2. So this is a basic formula we are having. Okay, this is a basic formula we are having. So, in place of n, we can take n minus 2 because the upper limit is n minus 2, not n. So, what's happening here in this n place, we have n minus 2. And here in n plus 1 place, we have n minus 2 plus 1. So, what it get? n minus 1 by 2. So, I hope you understand how you are getting this thing. Okay. And then see here. Now you can uh, see uh, this is n minus 1. Okay, you are taken outside, right? Uh, this is n minus 1. And then here it is uh, n, uh, n minus 2 into n minus 1 by 2. Okay, n minus uh, this by 2. So now you can consider like this. This will be become n minus 1 will take as a common. So now it will become n minus 1 whole square minus n minus 2 into n minus 1 by 2. So now you can simplify this. Now you get the value as n minus 1 by 1 into n by 2. Okay. So now this is uh, equals to 1 by 2 n square minus 1 by n. So now you can uh, remove the constants. We are getting the uh, exponential value that is n square. So now you can consider the worst case uh, time complexity of this algorithm is theta of n square. So in this way, we are going to find out uh, uh, the time complexity of uh, a non-recursive algorithms. I hope you all understand. Thank you.